All right. First question comes from Cole Winston. Go ahead, Cole. Hi, Virgil. Uh, thank you for taking time, first of all. Um, how much do you think, now that you get this next shot, you, you again, another shot at McKenzie, how much do you think his talents plus international appeal will get you closer and more prepared for your world title shot? Um, if I if I went against Michael McKenzie, you know, Michael McKenzie, he's ranked in the WBO. He's undefeated. It, it would really look uh, good on my resume if I beat him. You know, he's a good fighter. Um, and my second question is you're also the number one contender in three of those four sanctioning bodies. Do you want to wait for Spence versus Crawford to happen, or would you like to jump in there against one of them before it happens? Uh, I mean, it really doesn't matter. It's I, I want my shot with, with whoever. It, it honestly doesn't matter to me. That's fair. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Cole. Next, we have Gail Frankenthal from New York Fights. Go ahead, Gail. Hi, thank you very much. Good afternoon, Virgil. You look good, you look healthy, but you did have a little bit of a health and training hiccup. What did you learn, if anything, from that and um, how are you gonna apply that to your training moving forward? I mean, you know, we just, uh, we just make some changes here and there. I mean, not huge changes, but overall, I, I feel 100% now, you know, we're ready to go and uh, we're just gonna do what we do best. Did the slowdown make you more anxious to get back in the ring? I yes, it did. You know, I I'm, I really want to get back into the ring now. By the time I fight in August, it'll be almost a whole year. And last question: What are your plans for the rest of the calendar year, um, assuming that you get a victory in this fight in August? Yes, I I would love to uh, to fight at least twice this year, definitely, and I would love to stay even more busier the following year. Great. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. Uh, next up, Miguel Maravilla from Fight News. Go ahead, Miguel. Hey, what's up, Virgil? First of all, man, um, how disappointing was it the last time, you know, you fight week, all of a sudden, you know, it's off. You're, you're back, you know, you're back to fighting McKenzie now. How anxious are you? And, you know, what did you see in McKenzie? Did you see his fight the last time on, you know, what was supposed to be your card? Uh, you know, I was very disappointed that I didn't get to fight, you know, especially since the we we found out I wasn't able to go on literally the week of the fight. You know, it's it's not like I wanted to waste a whole training camp and some months before that. Uh, you know, that's that's not me. But anyway, so I, I forgot the rest of your, the early questions. Did you see uh, Michael McKenzie? What did you think of him in, in the ring, you know? Okay, yeah, so I, I did see him fight. I did see him fight, and, uh, I mean, I didn't think too much, you know. I, I'm just watching the fight. I'm analyzing. Uh, honestly, I didn't really think too much about it. Is there anything about his style that, you know, you you probably say, hey, this is the first time I, you know, I'll go the distance going, you know. Well, not really because he's uh, – he fought, first of all, he fought against uh, – someone else that had a completely different style for me. So you can't really base off of that. But um, I'm aware of how he fights. So it was a more recent fight. So we, we know we have a little more tape to go off of. Thank you very much, man. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you, Miguel. Next, we have Jeremy Harages from Fansighted. Go ahead, Jeremy. Hi, Virgil. Thank you for taking the time. Um, as you mentioned, it's it's going to be almost a year since your last fight how do you anticipate that time away from from a professional bout is going to impact you um I don't think it should have any impact if if anything you know it's just uh I've, I mean I've been training uh, these past few weeks I'm sorry in sparring I've, I've been doing really good I've, I feel great I feel like I I've been fighting like every week you know, so I don't think it's going to have any impact on my performance at all. Um, this fight, you know, the, the last fight was supposed to happen at the Galen Center. This one's happened at Dickey's Arena, which is like a 25 minute drive from from your residence. How do you feel that having that kind of home feel advantage is going to, to help you out in this fight? Uh, I don't see it as a home field advantage. Uh, definitely the people will be on my side and. But I feel like regardless of where I'm at, whenever I land punches, the, the crowd erupts anyway. So I don't see it as an advantage. Thank you. I appreciate it. And best of luck. 
Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, next up, we have Jalen Dominguez. Go ahead, Jalen. Hi, Virgil. Thank you so much for spending the time to be here with us. Um, I just have a question about your camp. So when you decided to, to switch camps, did you feel like that was purely an individual choice or did you have some type of collective support either from family or your team in making that decision? Oh, yeah, it was definitely collective. You know, it's, it's always collective when um, it's a big change like that you know I, I had we had the support from from everybody you know it's a lot of opinions a lot of point of views and that's that's what we went off of mm. uh, what would you say has been the most significant change in terms of um, the more education that you've gotten from switching camps and anything that you've noticed in your skill set that has changed from that yeah uh, first of all I'll start I'll start off by saying that I've learned uh, things from all the different coaches that I've that I've been with, you know, uh, every coach has their own point of view, different, different style. Um, one thing I've learned from Manny is, uh, like, be really explosive with your punches. You know, don't don't waste time to react. Don't think about it because if you think about it, you know, you get stuck, and then you know you can make a mistake off of that. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jalen. Next, we have Chris from Teve Boxeo. Go ahead, Chris. Buenas tardes, Champ. Eh, estamos este, feliz que estás de regreso. Eh, ¿Qué nos puedes contar de tu división? Están los grandes nombres como Spence y Crawford y luego pues ahí tenemos también a Virgil Ortiz. Sí, uh, yo, yo, uh, yo siento muy orgulloso para estar con, con ellos porque ellos, ellos uh, son muy grandes peleadores, ¿sí? Y por eso yo, yo tengo mucho orgullo. Um, Virgil, you can answer in English if you like. I got, I got to practice. Okay. <laughs> este, también te quería preguntar, Chap, tu ex entrenador, Robert Garcia, él va a estar en la esquina de Anthony Joshua cuando pelee contra Ustrick en la revancha. Sí. ¿Qué piensas de este equipo de Robert Garcia con Anthony Joshua? Uh, yo, yo pienso que, que uh, Robert, he, I think he's going to help Anthony a lot. You know, Ro Robert is a very knowledgeable uh, trainer. He's been a fighter too, so he's been in the ring. So he, él tiene mucho experiencia dentro y afuera del de cuadrilate. Y, and he's going to help him a lot. Es todo, champ. Estamos ahí en Texas apoyándote. Échale muchas ganas. Muchas gracias. Gracias, Chris. Next, we have Manuk Abapoyan from Boxing Scene. Go ahead, Manuk. Hey, Virgil. Um, I, I heard that you were answering a question regarding Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence. Um, first off, how do you see that fight unfolding? Who do you think wins and how? I mean, I'm not sure. You know, it's... Uh, it, it honestly really is a 50 50 fight to me. I feel like they're both good at what they both do. You know, they're both, they, well, they both can be southpaws. Arrow's a southpaw, and uh, Crawford, you know, he switches. He's a switch hitter. Uh, we're, we're just going to have to wait and see. I really don't know. Mm -hmm. They're obviously the roadblock to your title shot. Do you feel that the only way for you to get a title at 147 is when they decide to vacate? I, I I hope not. I really do hope that I get the chance to fight at least one of them. So I hope that's not the case. Mm -hmm. And uh, regarding this fight uh, with McKinson, what did you, uh, considering you saw him train to fight you and he ended up, uh, you know, fighting someone else, what did you see in him in that fight that perhaps you hadn't seen in, in your preparation leading up to it? I mean, there... Honestly, there really wasn't a whole lot of like, how do I say this? Like varying different things to look at. So I think everything that we expected, we saw. But at the same time, uh, like I answered in another question, he went, he went up against a different style fighter than what he would have fought against me. So, I mean, we, we can't really say anything too much off of that. And are you disappointed that 
it ended up being him again for this fight. I know David Avanesian was uh, a potential opponent. Um, can you t take us through a little bit that? I know you commented on social media, but what happened with that fight falling through? Yeah, I mean, basically, I mean, I'm not the one sending the contracts or negotiating or anything like that. But from what my manager has told me, we sent them a contract. Well, no, they negotiated and they agreed. And when we sent them the contract, they they were sitting on it for like four and a half weeks and we didn't hear anything since we i mean well, it's not a knock on david himself or well, because we don't know if he said no or if his managers or management said no all i know is that we haven't heard anything mm -hmm. and outside of obviously crawford and spence you know looks like they're going to be fighting um sometime this fall who do you you wanted when we first talked in february you said you wanted to fight three times this year you might still have a chance to fight by the end of the year. When is, uh, who is that opponent you're circling for the final fight of this year? Honestly, at this point, whoever takes the fight. That's, that's just the basic answer I'm gonna give you because it's whoever wants to fight me can, can get it. Thank you, Virgil. Thank you. Thanks, Manuk. Uh, next up, we have Michael Frank from Boxing Guru. Go ahead, Michael. Hey, Virgil, how are we doing today, man? I'm pretty good. How about you? Doing well. Thank you. Um, so we know that your father is pretty involved um, in training and management. Can you tell us the pros and cons of that relationship? Um, the pros? My, my dad knows me better than anyone else in this, uh, in this world. You know, he, he's known me literally all my life. Uh, cons, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't say that there's any cons. I'm not just saying it because he's like right across from me. Uh, the only, I think it depends who you are. He pushes me to my limit and more. Some people can think of that as a con, but to me, I see it as he knows what I can do and he's, he's bringing it out of me. Gotcha. And we know that uh, Hector Beltran is also heavily involved. Can yes. you tell us what he brings to the table when it comes to training? Yeah, Hector Beltran, he's been, I think he's been with us since 2012. So it's been a decade now. You know, he, he knows me. He's probably the, the guy that knows me the second best uh, for my dad. And, uh, you know, he, he brings a lot of knowledge. He brings a lot of point of views. Uh, I get mitts from both of them. They both have they both have the same goal. And, but sometimes to reach that goal, you, sometimes you might need a different approach or, or a different point of view or something like that, you know. And Hector was also a professional fighter. He has a, he's had experience inside the ring as well. So he also brings that to the table, and I'm grateful for that. Gotcha. Thanks, Virgil. Good luck, man. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Uh, just a reminder, we're going to start wrapping this up. If you have a question, please raise your hand. Um, the next question is from Christian Mosqueda. Go ahead, Christian. Hey, Virgil. How are you doing, brother? Hey, I'm pretty good. How about you? Doing good, brother. Just to pick off that last question, um, you and your father and your team, you guys have have been known to accept uh, the guidance of many well-recognized uh, coaches. What advice do you give uh, to fighters, to young fighters who have been trained by their fathers since they were kids when, when seeking outside guidance? Um, can, can you reword that? Okay, so um, if a young fighter has been with their dad um, throughout their whole career and uh, you feel like they're plateauing, what advice do you give to that young fighter you know, in, in terms of the relationship to their dad, if they want to seek, you know, outside outside uh, guidance. Um. Well, see, it, it it really does. It's it's different with everybody. I can't I can't speak for everybody because what me and my dad have is very special and it's it's very different. My dad is my dad himself is very open to asking for help outside too. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's that's a very hard question to answer because i can't i can't speak for everybody mm -hmm. what me and my dad have is special hey and after birthday Reeve is a fighter who fights this saturday just like you he has a hundred percent knockout ratio what are your thoughts on him and do you see any similarities between your style and his style the, you said it was who again uh, arthur better oh oh yeah 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 um I haven't seen him fight too many times. I'll be honest. So that's like completely out of my, he's a, he's a light heavyweight, right? Yes. Light heavyweight. Um, I, 
I think he's a. Uh, I think he gets it too much. I'll be honest. Um, I think that his he's he's a good fighter. He's a really good fighter. Maybe a little less defensively uh, responsible. I think if if he were just just to add a little bit more defense to him, he'd be he'd be set. Honestly, but I think that he's a really good fighter, and that's that's that. Thank you, Virgil. Great to see you back, bro. Can't wait to see you um fight. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. And our final question is going to come from Osiris Munir from Anak Entertainment. Go ahead, Osiris. Hi, Virgil. How are you? I'm pretty good. How about you? Good. Listen, I have always wanted to know what are they doing for what are you guys doing for training these days? Is it still very, very the training that we experienced, Joe Frazier, Tyson, Ali, and those guys, or has technology changed? The type of training, the the uh, the efficiency of training, the timing of training has any of that changed since that time? Um, I it's changed a lot, definitely. I know that. Um, as far as like machines or anything, I, we we don't really use too many machines like that. I would definitely say the recovery process has gotten a lot better because I know. I know a lot of old coaches that, that used to say that sometimes they would pass out from trying to lose weight and all that, that the coaches would tell them not to drink water when they should have been drinking water. When you're losing weight, you have to drink a lot of water. Even, even in that last, uh, those last few days, you, you have to drink a lot of water. So your body, you have to give water to lose water, you know? So I, I feel like the, the recovery and just taking care of yourself, like physically has changed a lot. As far as training wise, I think it's almost the same. Let's put in the work. All right, thank you, Osiris. Um, Virgil, any last words to the people in this virtual roundtable today before we conclude? Um, I mean, just know that I'm I'm back. I'm better. I'm stronger. I and I'm more than happy, excited to be back in the ring, August sixth. All right, thank you so much, Virgil. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Just a reminder, tickets go on sale on- Thanks, Cecilia. <laughs> thank you, Osiris. Tickets go on sale on Tuesday next week. And um, we are more than happy to welcome Virgil back to the ring on August 6th at Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth, Texas. Thank you, Virgil, for your time. Thank you.